clock now, so we call the order, the meeting to order. Roll call. Uh, Mrs. Dozal. Here. Mr. Wright. Here. Mr. Lopez. Present. Ms. Hawkins. Here. And Mr. Salcedo. Here. All right, first deal is the action of items, the curriculum of adoption. Um, move to, to award RFP number 2019 to 2002 for English curriculum to Hot and Mifflin Park. Hot and Mifflin, okay, here you go, is what she said. H-M-H. 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 The N2 Lecture 2020 as presented. Need a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion on it? I still have questions. <laughs> yeah. um, are there any other school districts in this state using it? Yes, and I sent that out, um, Mesa School District, the brand new Literature 2020. Mm-hmm. Are we the first? I, this is Lisa Ballard. She's from HMH. I asked her to be here in case there were some questions that um, perhaps I couldn't ask about the system because this particular iteration of the ELA curriculum is so new. It's, it's brand new. It's brand new. So we do have districts in other areas that have been piloting it. Um, but as far as use in Arizona, this is actually one of the second, I think, or second or third district that has actually purchased, that is looking to purchase it. Um, so most of the pilots we had are in Texas. We do have some larger schools that are also looking at it, and Mesa is one of them. What relationship does this have to the one that we didn't approve <coughs> last year? Oh, the science? English? Remember when we didn't approve the English? No. This is a totally different? Well, we didn't bring a package for English. We brought a resource for science. Oh, and okay. decided to hold off. Sure. <clears throat> yeah, no, it wasn't English. We English was in the pipeline. Remember, we had a five-year plan, and English was supposed to be first with science, and right. we just and we called it. Totally unrelated to any. Totally of that. unrelated. In the pipeline. Right. Okay. So have the teachers been putting input in all of this? <laughs> yeah. So um, we formed a committee, and I'll be honest. Uh, one of the questions had to do with our department chairs not being involved. And um, I wrote back, I don't know if you have a chance to read, but we have one department chair. I sought input from both of them. They're on our PLC committees and our curriculum committees. But I wanted to also hear from a wider range of voices, and our procurement officer really cautioned us about having too large of a group. And so when I spoke with Annika and Kim, I asked for their input. But I also um, had some reservations about both of them serving on the committee. They served on two other committees. We talked about curriculum for several years. Um, One of them was applying for another school district. I received a request for a letter of recommendation. And I just felt really strongly that I didn't want someone at that table making that decision if if she was not going to be in the district. Um, The other individual I had heard was going to withdraw. As department chair, she was really um, quite overtaxed with a second job after school, with helping her parents in their business, and some other personal issues. So um, I spoke with both of them, and I asked for names. They gave me names. I talked to uh, our principals. I got gathered names from those two department chairs, and I formed our committee. The committee was really, um, we were cautioned to keep it under 10, uh, seven, five to seven would be better. And as you can see from the names that I submitted, um, there are some folks on there who've served in English um, teaching positions in our district for several years. And there was a wide range of um, experience. I had some teachers who had taught in other school districts. I wanted their perception as well. Uh, And then I asked for our instructional coaches. Um, Alistair Mouse taught English in our district for several years. He's been in every English classroom in the district for the last three years. Um, I asked that Chantel Frazee, our new instructional coach, be part of the team because she's been in the other core content areas as well as Alistair and she can also give that perspective um, as far as literature, how our kids are reading, what is she seeing in the classroom. So um, that was part of, of why the committee was comprised the way they were. We called, um, we had a one day vetting committee and we looked at, that committee looked at all of the um, individuals who submitted and we narrowed it down to two. 
We were not allowed to talk about it. We couldn't discuss it outside of our committee. Procurement rules are um, brand new to me, so that was quite interesting to go out for an RFP and to be um, held to certain constraints from that RFP process. So then we had open forums the next two weeks for the presentations. The next week, I'm sorry, um, we had seven teachers show up along with the committee. So I'll be honest, they put their faith in this committee to make this decision, is what I was told. Um, and the feedback I got was very minimal. I feel like this committee um, was charged with making a decision that was best for everyone. What we didn't want as a committee, we don't want our kids just stuck on a computer. And that's why HMH also looked very appealing to us. It wasn't just plug the kids in and go, we have that genuity for that. We could certainly be doing that. Uh, the differentiation, the scaffolding, the choices that we can make as an ELA team um, were very appealing. ESS, our reading kids, our, our you know, special ed, runs the gamut of differentiation. And so um, when after the two presentations, um, we had about a three hour discussion and uh, the committee took this very seriously and it was, it was unanimous to go with h and so it will be used for freshmen? 9-12. 9-12, for the AP classes. There are ways to enrich and enhance. Now our AP, as you know, Connie, we have to, um, AP classes are college board approved. And so you submit a syllabus. As a former teacher, I would submit a syllabus. They're really not curtailed to a textbook. Um, AP Lane and AP Literature, there are lots of resources that we bring, but College Board doesn't say you have to have a textbook as much as you have to have that solid curriculum. In some of the other core content areas, AP areas, they do have books. They have recommended books. We have ancillaries. So you read everything from, you know, 6th century poetry to modern poetry in your AP Literature, and you're expected to analyze it. Uh, you read, I had my kids read <coughs> over 20 <coughs> novels. Um, of dar varying age, you know, eras. Um, AP Lang is all about rhetoric. And so you write, you read, you analyze. You write, you read, you analyze. So they may use some of the resources from here, but they certainly wouldn't write that AP curriculum based on this material. They can use, utilize the resources, absolutely. But unless they align a college-approved syllabi to this, and I don't think then they'd be approved. You know, it's 612 with capabilities for enrichment at all levels. College and career preparedness, uh, differentiation for our reading students, our ELL students. Um, there's a database collection in it, so there's a growth mindset is interwoven in all of the units and the exercises. How does it connect with um, power schools? Like, will they be able to test on this and then automatically feed into power school, or will this still be that answer? Well, it's very similar to Blackboard, you know, and the committee knew that. They're importing data now. Um, Dave, did you want to answer the responses I sent to you about the IT portion, or? Well, the, the student rosters and things like that for the teachers would be driven by PowerSchool. It does not transfer grades or anything. Not, not, not yet. And it's H coming, though. Yeah, it's one of the things that we're working on, because we know that that's important, and we know across the country there's so many districts PowerSchool, that's one of the things that's really big at the top of our list to make sure that there's that connectivity down the road. But the class rosters can be yes. 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 Yeah. That's double entry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had a question. So the integration between 8th grade and ninth grade, so how does this curriculum or how does this program right here kind of help transition between our 8th graders and ninth graders coming into our school? Or does it? No, that's going to be up to our teachers and the writing of our curriculum to set our pacing guide. Uh, the elementary district does not accept Toltec. Toltec does utilize h and <coughs> They don't utilize Literature 2020 into literature. They're using collections, which is the most, the last, the last collection. Mm -hmm. And so um, mm -hmm. our students from Toltec may have some... Um, it's, they're really different, Tony. I, I, will be, I will say this. You have a pacing calendar. You put it together with a scope and sequence. 
and you ask your teachers to differentiate for those eighth graders coming into our district as ninth graders. And that's where the beauty of actually taking these resources and writing curriculum, that's where it becomes imperative. And we've got a rollout plan already in place for how to do that. So we'll stick with what we're doing right now in our ninth and our first and second <coughs> quarter, but we'll be working with our teachers on that third and fourth quarter rollout. So at second semester, we're rolling out HMH. We're working on quarter one and two to, to help make sure we support our kids. I can tell you the literature here is brand new. A lot of it is uh, stated it's brand new stuff that the elementary district hasn't already taught our eighth graders, which is lovely, um, because that's also been a problem. You know, where they've already read um, Romeo and Juliet in the seventh and eighth grade, and we're asking them to read it again. So some of what is included in the, um, the reading list and the literature is new, and that's really appealing and very exciting for our teachers and our kids. Because I think the biggest challenge our district has is, is the, we have such a broad, uh, um, I want to say audience, of people, kids that, that we have to, to basically educate. And so how do, what resources do we have to have, because I mean, we have a big district, so we have kids from on all spectrums of, uh, of our learning that we need, so I want to know, because I think one thing we have our challenge on is having enough resources for all the different groups of, that we have. So I guarantee we have enough resources. It's whether or not our teachers are differentiating for those kids standing in front of them in that classroom. We don't currently have enough resources. We will if we adopt a curriculum. This district has not adopted an ELA curriculum for 15 years. So consider that. We can't find teacher textbooks. We can't find student textbooks. They don't, we keep ordering novel sets. That's fine. But where do you get the continuity to teach all of those students and then have a concerted, collaborative conversation in a PLC that's discussing similar resources? So it, it's twofold here, Tony. I, I, the board, I just want you to know that. Without the teachers having the resources, you're right. They're creating it as they go. We're offering, with an adoption of curriculum, you're still not giving them everything they need without them coming together and writing that scope and sequence and that pacing. They can't teach everything in every unit. Well, I think you, you just mentioned something though, that kind of stuck in my head right now, just the continuity of it. I mean, so right now, we have teachers teaching something different and differently. We could have. And, and so, that's what, without, a, without a curriculum. So now, uh, I just wanted to hear more on how we're going to make more uniformity and to have continuity in the education that we need for these. So when we start in, you know, we were all teaching the same standards, but we may be teaching them a little different way. And you don't want to, re you don't want to remove the flavor of how I teach. Right. Don't confuse that with what I teach, because the what is what has to stay standard. How I teach it, I teach very different from Sean Casey, but we may, we're teaching the same thing, okay? That's what's imperative. So the rollout plan that we have in place will ensure that our teachers, we don't just want to throw the materials at them and say, go for it. Now we're still selecting, you know, we've got too much um, choice. So what we want to do is work with our ninth grade teachers and they start to write and have those common conversations about, okay, we're going to teach this first quarter. We've decided on these three units and this is what we're going to teach. We already have the standards in place. We know what we're teaching too. So how do we teach that? What are we choosing that gives that continuity? And we're looking at planning. That's what we'll be doing all year. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, no, I just think so. I'm just looking for the, I'm trying to think of what the check and balance is on that. So I mean, you're teaching that, and so we're, how do we know? The check and balance is how they do on those assessments and those standards. If we're a standards-based curriculum, which we are in this district, everything's standard-based, then when we test on those standards, we should see improvement. A couple of things I might add. Um, you know, I, I sat on both presentations, um, and so I got a chance to see it, but one of the things I think that came up several times that has been brought up that I was impressed with is that the ability of this curriculum to both enrich and to remediate. I mean, just the, the levels of which how far below where a kid might be and how far you could do, there's a lot of variation. The other thing I was excited about, because we're, we're um, online devices, is that all of this 
uh, all of this will be available on our students' technology, and they do not have to be connected to the internet to interact with it. So even our kids who go home and they have internet issues, they will not have to be connected to the internet to be able to interact with the technology that exists in their class. So that, I think that's a big piece for us, that they'll be able to have that. And I was also excited from my experience to have a company that knows that we're electronic devices and allow us to do that without buying a textbook for every kid to go along with it. Because a lot of these companies now, they used to, you have to buy all the hardcover textbooks to get the curriculum. And so to be able to do this in this way, I think it's a big benefit for our district. Question. Um, is it my understanding then that we adopt this curriculum that it's going to be a seven year commitment? Yes, and actually HMH, um, uh, our, our procurement officer has worked with HMH to get us uh, seven years for the cost of five. And so we're really, we're really excited about that. So it is, it's a, it's a seven year commitment. We, that's what that total is, it's for seven years. We did the same thing, Joe, with our um, Pearson math. And so it's an, ex it's an extended period of time. And then it allows for renewal. If you're happy with what you have, you continue. You just, you know, reapply or renew your contract, I should say, and that's the same thing. Or you go out for another RFP. We hope not to do that. <laughs> <coughs> now I noticed that it says like it includes free purchase per, um, points for per student edition. Will that be enough to cover all the novels that they may be? I, I don't know how the point system that's, works out. That's one thing. That, as, as a rep, I'll be honest. Well, they changed the way they used to do it, so it's, it's kind of um, varied now. But I've been trying to get the correct novels, but each novel has a certain amount of points, and they're working on a list that will that I will be sending and providing to Melanie. I, I honestly can't tell you how many novels, but it will be a lot um, that we'll be able to provide based on the number of points, because I think they're going to have like 11,000 something points, um, and then they can choose class sets, and, and we recommend sharing, you know, the library teachers using that. But right. I mean, just quite honestly, I can't give you the exact number of novels, but I think you'll have plenty to be able to choose from. And we have districts that will choose. I know one of the questions came up, can we do it all this year? And I think Caroline, you mentioned, can we do it next year? And those points are there for the seven years, so it's not like they have to choose this year. So they can really use the curriculum as they need, and then see, maybe they'll you know, use some of the points this year and then they'll decide based on their curriculum mapping that they, you know, want to wait and decide next year once they kind of right. get into the program. And there are some novels that our <coughs> teachers want to keep. Yeah. And there are some that we've already purchased. We don't want to be, we still want to be frugal with our resources. And there are some of those very traditional novels, some not so tr traditional that we've chosen. And, and that was one of the questions. Wait, I don't want to necessarily get rid of this novel. Um, and, and that's why we probably won't even look at novel sets until further down the line, where we start to have more of a conversation. We'll probably keep, the novels aren't bad. They're very, very good, obviously. Um, you teach the canon of literature, and then you infuse it with some lovely short stories and some more modern pieces of poetry and um, other um, informational text as support. So uh, the novels we're excited about to be able to look at, but we've got some in place. We just may need to add more and supplement maybe as we run out. So there are hardcover textbooks that also come with this then? There, there will be a 30, we were given the opportunity to order, obviously we're a one to one district. When we ordered Pearson, um, I chose to have a set of 30 of each content area, warehouse in the library and or the bookstore for checkout. And we've done the same thing with the Pearson, the hard copy. Um, we, it's really important that our students in the um, ESS classrooms or our reading classrooms who may not have a ninth grade textbook, now if, if um, our, our um, special ed student teacher wants to check out a class set, she can check those out. Our reading teacher who may not want to use the device necessarily, the soft copy we felt would be very effective in our autism classrooms. You know, there, there are English classes that we need to have certain sets of materials. We also have an ISS in school. Um, and those students may have been taken off or removed from access to using a computer. We have teacher, or I'm sorry, parents who don't want their kids on a device. And so 30 was a pretty manageable number, um, a class set to be able to check out. So we've always got a hard copy access for those students that may not um, be allowed for whatever reasons to be on a computer. Any other questions? Um, 
Dozo? Yes. Mr. Wright? Yes. Mr. Lopez? Yes. Mrs. Hawkins? Yes. And Mr. Salcido? Yes. Next up, uh, action item, item B, uh, personnel. Move to approve the resignation of Jasmine Johnson, uh, dance, uh, dance teacher at Vista on May 24, uh, 2019. Transfer of uh, Andrea Pena Turan from student uh, success coach to assistant principal of the district e-learning program. Julie Parks Evans from Desert Wind Clerk 1 to Vista Grandy Administration Assistant. Sheila Rodriguez from part-time parent liaison to Secretary 1, guidance at Vista Grandy High School. And Eva Steinhoff to CTE Specialist and appointment for temporary summer IT worker at uh, Joshua McDonald, placing Devin Kinkeed and Priscilla Amato at Vista Grandy Summer School Worker at $12 per hour. We get a motion to approve it. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Mrs. Dozo? I did have a question. Oh. Okay. So, you know, I understand the movement of Andrea um, to a district e-learning program. Under whose, which director does that fall? Well, with her the learning program, yes. um, it'll really fall underneath both building level principals who would then fall under my supervision. So this movement is something obviously it's going to be very close to, to my heart and something that I'll be watching very carefully this entire year. So I'll be staying in touch with it. The whole idea was to be able to have her be able to be the point person for both of our <coughs> schools because she's right now will have that she has the knowledge and expertise to keep us moving the way we've been doing it. So she'll spend time on both campuses. So, so she'll work as part of the administrative team and underneath each building of the principal, but in a sense, um, you know, will be under my uh, my supervision because she'll fall underneath them. And we'll so, provide an office at each campus then. For yeah, we're going to find space for her to be able to work and, and be at each at each campus. Okay, and then the the clerk, the administrative assistant, as an additional cost to the district. Was that? Can you kind of tell me sure. why? You know, the increase to 12 months, or sure. how that would come about? Well, so when, when we, right after I had talked to the governing board about this decision, and um, you know, I went down and we started looking at um, the staff that existed, the current roles that we're in, and the roles that we felt like we needed. Because the one thing that I, the one, the one promise that I made to the staff is that they would continue to work for our district and not make any less money than they're making now. So one of the things we looked at is, um, and I, again, as I've come in this first year, I've tried to just li listen and learn and do all that. I've asked several times why our, uh, our assistant principals who are in charge of student services don't have an assistant to help them. Um, that's one of the busiest jobs that we have. And it really it didn't make any, I've, I've never been anywhere where they didn't have one. So we, we haven't had one they've been making do. And so since we already had one of our, our uh, office staff is an admin assistant and, and really easily falls into that role. We also have an administrative <coughs> person who has the skill set to do the job, but has not been in that position. So the elevation was to do, um, make her 12 months of work right alongside, um, you know, work right alongside genetity over at, at Vista and to be able to, to <coughs> because the admin's there 12 months, and to really be able to do that support that we need. And then Andrea, when she's splitting schools, will also need somebody that can kind of, you know, work with her. So both sides will work with Andrea and help her on whatever side she's at. So kind of, kind of serving two roles. So that was the reason is to is to create an administrative assistant for the um, the um, student services, you know, um, administrator um, to help them be able to provide the services and, and do things more efficiently. And in the summertime is when we get a lot of our uh, our work done. Yes. I have a question here for um, a recommendation to move Eva Steinhoff to 12 months. Um, what is the role of the CTE specialist slash DO? So to answer that one, um, this year, um, you know, at the very beginning of the year, we had hired a brand new grants specialist, Joan Curtis, and unfortunately Joan is no longer with us. Um, and when she passed, um, I was kind of, I didn't, I, I wasn't, wasn't sure exactly which direction I wanted to go in. And so, 
to try to find that position after the school year started is not an easy, easy find because a lot of people who can do that job are already employed and under contract. So um, Steve Zipes has been here, has a quite, quite a bit of experience working with grants and different things. Had a conversation with him and, and said, hey, would you be willing to, to do this job, to really take on, to wear two hats and take on CTE and better grants. He willingly did so. Um, and now to give him the support that's necessary to be able to do while he's wearing two hats for his assistants to try to do it the way they've been doing it is, is been a little bit difficult. So what we would like to do is be able to have Tina just focus strictly and do all the federal grants and have Emma do all CTE. Steve will be their supervisor, but he'll have an assistant. While he's wearing two hats, he'll have an assistant on both sides of the hat um, to help him with all that needs to be done and all the fine details and testing and everything that comes with that. She has an expertise in, in CTE and is willing to, to be able to step up. And so again, then we won't have a need to fill another federal grants person if we can do it this way. Okay. Was Tina Joe? She worked with Joe, but she also worked with Steve. So she, yeah. coached, she yeah. Steve Merrill, but she, yeah, but she was with Joe. But she also worked, did some stuff with CTE the whole time. Mm -hmm. So um, they've been instrumental. I know it's been a big learning curve. You know, Steve you know, will tell you that this year, but they've gotten it done and they've worked hard. And so, um, you know, to have him, to have the support on both sides will be very beneficial to make sure we're not nice and cross the T's when we need to. Any other questions? Yes, Mr. Rice? Yes. Mr. Lopez? Yes. Mr. Hawkins? Yes. And Mr. Salcido? Yes. Moving on to item C, Superintendent Performance Pay. Um, we have for discussion and approval of Superintendent, uh, Superintendent Performance Pay for 2019-2020 as presented. <coughs> or do anything today and, and what you want to wait till the June board meeting, I completely understand. I just, being new and going through this process, I, I was talking with Mary and I said, hey, you know, part of my contract is if there's, I, I, I have the ability to earn performance pay based on, on my job. So when I first started with you guys, I created goals, which you approved, and we were going to use those goals as a, as a premise for a basis for whether or not my, my performance pay came to be. And so... Um, and uh, doing so, I just, you know, with everything going on in the school year, you don't have time to look at things. And so then Mary and I looked at the language and said, oh, you have to do it by June 15th. Well, that's coming quick. And mm -hmm. so we haven't even discussed it, haven't even talked to it. I have my goals. I'm happy to send, I can send all the goals again to all of you. Um, I can't tell you how to do this process. You are the governor. Mm -hmm. so, so has everybody had a chance to review his goals? He, he sent them out about a week ago or so. Um, no, I don't think no. I sent them. I don't think I sent them to everybody. Them. Uh, so I, I have them, and I will. I can have them out to you today. Okay. So. I'd like I'd like to see what <laughs> I'd like to see what we what we established as what what the goals are, mm -hmm. and what you or where 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 we established that how much of your goals you you met, mm -hmm. so we can. So we yeah. can yeah. approve it. So this is one of the conversations we had early on. You as the board have to decide the criteria. I can't tell you what the what the rubric is. I can't tell you what the thing is. All I can tell you is what my goals are. Okay. And I can certainly um, I can certainly elaborate from my own personal perspective on, on where I am with those goals or you know how I feel about it. But it's going to be your evaluation as as a, as a group on the, on that. I think the, just to speak to this. Uh, my thought process on this was that it's pretty, I mean, we need to give everybody need to look at them, but, but they're pretty cut and dry. I think there's only one in there that probably doesn't have, you can't really answer quite yet, but as far as meeting the goals and whatnot, and I mean, I know we're all going through a process of everybody getting their, all the employees are getting separated yeah. currently and whatnot, so this just seems appropriate to kind of discuss mm -hmm. it for, for him also. So. Um, I'll let you go through them, but I think that's kind well, of... Well, I have them. I can read them to you if you want me to, or I can send them out to you. I think both. Want me to read them to you and then send them to you? Yeah. All right, so the, um, goal number one, um, uh, you know, begin the implementation of creating a strategic plan. Um, goal number one was to inspire excellence in students by fostering a learning environment in which every student...
can achieve academic excellence. Um, you know, again, I've spent at least three, three times in every single teacher's classroom in this district this year. Um, increasing student academic growth as measured by ADE to move our schools to a minimum of one letter grade forward this school year. That one's still, the jury is still out. However, and, and again, I'm not trying to, you know, uh, my goal, as I said all along, when I set these goals, we were D school. We found out after the fact that we became C, we just barely became C school, so I just told the staff, I'm not changing my goal, let's shoot, let's shoot for B, so let's try to get there. Um, uh, inspire excellence in, st in staff by retaining, recruiting, recognizing, and rewarding in and out of, of the classroom. I think we've done a whole heck of a lot of that this year. Um, promote um, CGUHSD as an asset to the community by making a desirable place to live, learn, and work. Um, number five, effectively manage operation and resource to max maximize the quality of services to students and staff in the community. And then number six, to initiate a process of creating stakeholder groups and facilitating meetings and conversations necessary to create the district's new strategic plan with the superintendent advisory council. So um, those are my goals. I'll send them to you guys. Um, I just can't tell you. <coughs> Okay. It's going to be up to you how to decide. Well, I think this is the ongoing. This is an ongoing discussion that that we started when we hired you as far as developing um, our goals and our and our checks and balances on whether you're meeting those goals. And, uh, and I think we still got some work to do to develop the checklist and 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 see where we're at. And I think we're talking about having some more board retreats, and I think. That also plays into this because that allows us to get kind of an intermediary where we're at kind of a feeling as far as what you're doing and the district is doing. So I think uh, we need to see that from you and, and your explanation of how you met your goals and what, where, where you think you're at on meeting that goal. Mm -hmm. And then we can, we're going to go move forward. I, I, don't, I, I feel good about the progress, progress that we've made this year. But I think we, we've got some work to do on making sure this is a better process okay. so that we we know where you're at by the time we get to this meeting next year and and, and approving your goals and say, yep, checkpoint A, B, C, and D, he had done all of them. Okay. Well, I think we do. I guess this is a working deal. So we can put all those kind of on the form and kind of so we can write them. So on our, I think our next meeting is on the 4th, mm -hmm. so we can put that on the agenda. So. And so basically, I don't know, we put a percentage on it where it was at, and we can, we can tally it up or however we want to, but well, we've never done it before, so, so we're, in a new, we're in a new area right now, so we might as well standardize yep. it and, and, and make it. We do, we need to do that. Yeah. So yep. that's kind of why I wanted to hear, so we had this discussion, so we can finalize it on June 4th. Okay. Yep. Uh, Dr. Beebe, on the performance pay itself, is that going to be a, Percentage? Is it it, it has. Well, there's. It's a. It's a dollar amount within my contract. Right. So, but it cannot be more than five percent. The, the stipulation contract can't be more than five percent of my overall pay. But the one, the other piece I wanted to you know, I know Tony touched to it, base to it. You know, we just gave every employee group a step right. Um, I can't speak for anybody who did this job prior to me, but I chose not to take that step, even though other people have. I, I didn't feel that was. I was not comfortable doing that. I did not take a step. Um, knowing that I had my performance pay, and I said, you know, I think that's, you know, it wasn't in my contract, but I was supposed to take a step, so I did not. So, um, you know. Well, I'll comment to that. We have paid our previous superintendent a step raise, right? so, mm -hmm. so this is different. So, I mean, again, we're doing something different, mm -hmm. and so that's why I want to make sure we're discussing it now. Mm -hmm. And so that, I mean, <laughs> if anybody's holding my money, I want them to get it to me. <laughs> so come June 4th, we could have an action, and uh, to be fair, and to give him so if you would like, I can not only send you my goals, but I could send you, I could send you, you know, send out the uh, evidence um, that, sure. that, would, that would support meeting those goals. That would be I good. Certainly, I could certainly send you out the different things or pieces that would go along with it. Okay. So I, that's, that can be easily done. And it doesn't have to be an all or nothing thing, right? The, it, can be based, it can be a rubric. It could be a rubric. It could be, again, there's nothing. You're the board, so you have to decide. I think I'll, I'll send something out here before Monday of next week and kind of what it, it may look like. Okay. You can give me your recommendation on where. But it's going to be simple. It should be pretty simple. And, but but I'm, I guess I'm just thinking that this is going to be a process that we follow where I can sit down with you at the beginning of every school year, develop a set of goals, get your blessing on it, and then be evaluated by those goals at the end of the year. Um, that's a process I've 
come to know and seen, and I think it's effective. And like I told you in the argument, I expect you to hold it down. So, so. perfect. So we'll have something to present and get it approved for the okay. next board. Meeting. I'll get I'll get it out as fast as I can this week. I'll get it out. I may even have it out tomorrow. We'll see. I'll get you out. My I'll, I'll send all of my goals with the the points that I would say that I, things that I've done I think <coughs> justify meeting the goals. So. Okay. You didn't have the motion on the board. No. Yet? This is off. For this one? Yeah. Do we have a no? Do we have a or was it a discussion? It's a discussion. I had a motion. Yeah, it was a discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, we we start we started and then it was first discussion and a possible motion. So no, there was no motion out there yet. So we're good. So do we need a table or we just move on? No, it, it was discussion and well, okay, it was approval, but yeah. If there's no motion, then we don't have to do anything. Okay. We'll just put it on the next agenda. Put it on the June agenda. Exactly the same way. Okay. Right. All right. Let's move on to D. Uh, out of state travel. I need to move to approve out of state travel for Steve Beebe and Mary Rosenbaum to Houston, Texas on June 16th through the 18th of this year. I move to approve the out of state travel for Dr. Beebe and Mary Rosenbaum to Houston, Texas. <laughs> Yeah, why didn't you want to go in July? <laughs> 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 uh, because, I don't know, it sounds good. You know, the humidity, June, July. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't really want to go to Houston at all in June <laughs> or July. But um, this Breakthrough Coach is a training that I've experienced or before. It really was life changing for me <laughs> as a building level experience. Principal helped me to be very effective in my practices. Um, I'd like to continue those practices now as a superintendent, but I can't do that without going through the training with my assistant at the same time. So Mary is graciously willing to go with me <laughs> yeah. in June. And, in the and I'm doing it this summer is to get the sooner we can go, the sooner we can start practicing those things. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to, to do that again. Be Not just so like excited. A, it'll be just like at the cabin, Mary. Yeah. 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 <laughs> with the air conditioning cranking, maybe. So. <laughs> and you don't go outside. Yeah, it won't be a, it won't be for a, you know, for them seeing sights outside. Sure. Sure. <laughs> a quick trip over a map. Very good. I think uh we want to get a motion to adjourn. No, no, we got a uh, Mr. Yes. Dozo, yes. Mr. Yes. Wright, Mr. Lopez, yes. Mr. Hawkins, yes. and Mr. Salcido. Yes. Now a motion to lucky people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, no, Jackson, please. Are free to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye.